Kia ora and welcome to Aotearoa, New Zealand in the South Pacific at the bottom of the Ring of Fire where spring is bursting and while well, the Northern Hemisphere are celebrating Samhain or Sawain, Autumn Time, the Harvest Festival, we here in the Southern Hemisphere are celebrating spring, she says, all rugged up in her merino wools and alpacas. <laughs> In a delightful um, change and shift in energy and spaciousness from Mama Bali. So let us begin with the alignment process today as we explore our solar cycles and becoming one with the sun. Inviting you to stand up, sound, breathe and move if it feels appropriate or if your body has been stuck or sitting for too long. As we align physical, mental, and emotional bodies. <clears throat> with all pervading soul or higher self. And monadic galactic self. <clears throat> Activating the earth star one foot, half a meter beneath the feet and connecting through the divergent meridians of the planetary body. Connecting through the rivers of gold that run through the planetary body. And the rivers of water and why. In Aotearoa, in Māori, why is the word for water and also the word for spirit. And water, as we know, is a conduit of information. As we return to our original waters, our original why, our original soul and spirit. Connecting also with the rivers of fire the molten lava that runs through the planetary body. And inviting those primordial elemental energies in their infinite potential up through your own unique pillar that they may support cleansing, clearing and purifying. Mm. Regeneration, rejuvenation, and recalibration. Activating the soul star one foot or half a meter above the head as we connect it with the celestial elements. and inviting those down to mix and mingle with the terrestrial element. Synergize and synthesize as the two become one, as our extraterrestrial natures of our soul with our physical animal human bodies come into union, come into one. And inhaling, exhaling with sound, remembering the power of our own unique sound song soul signature. Surrendering through the core of source and the heart of Gaia where the new earth architecture emerges. And really softening, landing into that space, knowing that this is where we are held and supported. This is where we move from holding space into being held. And all those we interact with from this space are also held 
through the new earth architecture. Through the frequency of our ancient future selves. As we arrive into the now. Surrendering through the core of source in our own heart spaces. Remembering that self-love comes first. That that deep unconditional love of self is the foundation of our very embodiment. It is what allows us pillars to stand strong in the, on this earth during these turbulent times of change. Surrendering through the core of source in the heart of our sun, that is at its cross-quarter point on this time of Sawain, Samhain in the north and Beltane in the southern hemisphere. offering us this important time to recalibrate, to reconnect, to realign with soul and source. Surrendering through the core of source in the great central sun. Surrendering through the core of source in the heart of the moon on this new moon. New moon being a time of new beginnings, planting seeds of potential. And surrendering through the core of source in the heart of Taya, our original moon, part of which is embedded in the African continent. Supporting the awakening in the dark continent. And supporting, therefore, our remembering. Activating our solar and lunar disks for those of us which have them active within and coming into harmony with the solar and lunar disks of the planetary body that are now spinning, pulsing out light encoded information to remind us of our galactic origins. And surrendering through the core of source in the galactic center into Homo Universalis, our ancient future selves. Wherever this is located within your system, it may be in the pineal gland, our gateway to God, the all seeing, the all knowing. And for some who have landed that into their body, it's often found in the navel. Inviting everyone to inhale, exhale with sound, strengthening and fortifying our own unique pillar. Oh. Next inhalation, exhaling, harmonizing our pillar with the point on the planet where we stand today. Oh. Inhaling, exhaling with sound and unifying our field throughout and all pervading through the planetary body. Oh. 
coming into the unified field on all continents where we are gathering from today throughout Asia, Europe, Africa, Middle East, UK, and the Americas. Oh. Maintaining this harmonic as I hand you over to Casey. We're going to stay in this juicy connection field that we have connected together through our consciousness. Amplifying our field at this time because we are unified as one. And recognizing that our stream of consciousness is more accelerated, amplified when we are connected together. We wish to welcome into the circle those who wish to participate today from the seen and unseen realms. Those coming forward first are those that are connected with the sun, the solar beings. Those light beings who walk on the surface of the sun, merging their consciousness with those great solar bodies. From our immediate sun and from the great central sun, they are stepping forward in connection with our circle today. Understanding that there are those beings that walk among the earth as well. Those carrying that consciousness field from the sun itself emitting that glow and that fire essence, reminding us of our origins, of our birthing gateways, of our souls. The start of the reincarnation cycles, separating from source and coming all the way down to where we are now and connecting us all the way back. Those bridges to those solar bodies that are here in every part of each of us. And there's an activation for our energy field, energy centers. As we receive the light codes from the sun and allow it to come into our physical system, amplifying our cells reminding us of our origins, reminding us of our connection to consciousness beyond this human, human realm. And reminding us of our creator beingness of what we're stepping into and the vast responsibility that it carries with it. Honoring the role of the creator and honoring our evolutionary steps as we step closer to that role. We welcome into the field all of the plants, the plant kingdom that wish to come forward and remind us how they soak up the sun and receive the codes and the rays and how they are amplifiers of that for us. How they are medicine for our human systems in order to receive more light. and how they are our allies for our physical systems. Recognizing into the field all those bodies of water that actually receive those light codes also on their surface, amplifying them, letting them dance on the surface, and then receiving them down to the core. On the surface of the ocean, we see the light playing from the sun and receiving light codes in that way. We are surrounded by the solar system and the solar bodies. If we choose to play in that field, reminding us in order to do so, we have to leave our houses. We have to come outside and we have to engage with the sun, with the moon, with the animal and the plant kingdoms, calling us back to our original nature, calling us back to ourselves. There are more codes to be shared among the circle at this time. We wish to hold the field that all can participate. 
in the learning and expression of which wishes to be shared at this time. I will choose to step back into the circle, encouraging everybody to anchor back into their human systems at this time. Breathing a little deeper into our bodies, feeling the floor beneath us and our chair beneath us. Breathing a little bit deeper. And when you are ready to come back in, open your eyes and we will begin. Thank you, Casey. And thank you, everybody, for being here today. And as I met with Casey before we opened the circle this morning, the bees were very present. And they've been present in my awareness since Landy and Aotearoa by their absence. Right now, it's springtime. Everything is bloom. There is bee food for every bee on this planet. And I've seen quite a few bumblebees. Kumla, my favorite Swedish word for bumblebee. But I've seen one honeybee since I have been here. And our bees are the queen of the sun. They are the ones whose whole life revolves around our sun and our solar cycles. Their GPS is calibrated by the sun. When the sun rises in the morning, so do they go out foraging and pollinating our planet. And when the sun sets in the evening, they come home and tuck themselves in for the night. They hold the template of Homo Universalis, the evolution evolutionary template for humanity and they are fading into extinction and it is a time for change and yes i am missing my honeybees and what it is to live in a unified field of love with them it is truly a gift of the most extraordinary kind that Words cannot express what it's like to be constantly within that unified field of love. And it is more important than ever at this evolutionary time on our planet for since we've gone through the great eclipse equinox and eclipse passage and the tsunami wave of awakening that is beginning it's never been more important to choose an environment that supports both our integration a regulation of nervous system and a harmonic relationship with nature and it's very interesting to see how many people are getting relocated on the planet right now to those particular places where they will be supported by their environment. And that's happening for me personally as well. My, my cycle in Bali, Indonesia came to completion. Both a 14-year cycle of being a temporary migrant and the last um, three years since 2021 where it has been my main base and place of service. And I have been relocated back here to Aotearoa, to New Zealand, I know for at least the next three-year cycle, 2027, until we come out of the night and back into the day on the Mayan calendar on the seventh wave, which we will really notice the awakening in humanity. But the time between now and then is very much the time of the great purification that has been prophesied. And it's important to make the most of these solar cycles, our equinoxes, solstices, and the cross-quarter points such as this one, to optimize the opportunity of cleansing and purifying our system for the next quarter or the next eighth of the cycle. Because for even those of us who have done a lot of personal work, there's seems to be more laundry to do. And often it's very simple, yet very old pieces 
that are asking to be addressed so that we can really anchor into our roots at this time. Let me just pause there and ask if there's any other contributions or questions for the field. Mm. it's um interesting when i tap into the consciousness of the bees it feels like they're in a great pause as well right now it feels like they're currently waiting for us to like make our next move or make our next choice whether they step forward with us or not and they're just patiently waiting holding their <laughs> breath even which is really interesting you know yan our bali bee man who co-founded Be Life Global with me uh, in Indonesia. He said to me, please, Leanne, before you go, I want to record a video of you. So here I am, quite tired, packing late in the evening on my last night in Bali, and he's like, the video. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So um, I said I would do it, so I showed up, and it was probably perfect because I didn't know what I was going to say. And I just spoke and that little less than three minute long video is so far being viewed by one and a half thousand people. And it's really interesting that we share so much through different platforms. Yet that little video about the bees has, has made such an impact on people. And at the same time, Be Life Global, what we birthed in Bali, Indonesia, is also calling for its next stage of evolution at this time. You know, it's we were all volunteers for the first one and a half years. And in the next year, um, Jan, we could put Jan on a salary. And we had enough to invest in one of our volunteers to start fundraising. But she realized that that wasn't her role. It wasn't up to her. So she stepped away. And another sister with a background, Evie, who you'll probably meet if those of you connected with Be Life Global, has a background in finance and business. And the bees have definitely called her into Bali to take on this next role and stage of um, Be Life Global's evolution because the bees have shown us it wishes to make an impact on a planetary level. And it's lovely that also Jenny has stepped forward and offered her time and energy to support with raising our next uh, lot of funding for Be Life Global. And that's on the bigger macrocosm of where be life global wishes to go and what it wants to become but on the microcosm i really invite people to to get a bee family to invite a bee family to move into your home with you because the gifts are beyond belief we'll get we'll get Jan on board sometime to share his story but his story is a very simple one the story of a young man married with a young child. He was a waiter in a hotel in, in Bali and he needed to spend more time with his son. So he left. His, his ancestors kept bees and he loved bees. So literally to support his family who were all suffering from different illness in different ways, he started removing hives from swarms of bees that had shown up in people's houses and inconvenient places and passing them on to people who wanted bees. And he was supporting his family with an income through this, for, through the bees doing this. And he often had up to 15 or 20 hives sitting on his veranda in his home. 
And when I first met him, we'd sit with the bees. And just being with the bees restored health to his entire family. So their cupboard full of pharmaceuticals and medications got cleared out and nothing had to go in that place. Because that frequency of the unified field of love is what we are. So simply living in that frequency restores us to the divine blueprint of our origins, which are love. So, yes, I do miss my being. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to finding a home where I can have more beings and get to know a different type of being here in Aotearoa than the Apis Serena, the tiny little one in, in Bali, Indonesia. So anything else for the bee story while we're here? And many people who are part of Guardians of Gaia have been very focused on our soul embodiment. And our landing as older models, our landing into the planet as the soul came through the sun as the gateway, came through our sun as the gateway. So our sun was our gateway. We came through to the planetary body where we were conceived and actualized through our parents into physical reality. So our sun is our gateway, original gateway. The new ones that are arriving are not having to come through the sun. They are arriving with their galactic architecture in, in place. So they're arriving as Homo Galacticus on the planet. We now have the capability to collect to our Homo Galacticus, our galactic selves. And it's been quite an extraordinary journey uh, through this year's Mastery of Multidimensionality Mentorship Group. Uh, compared with last year's journey, which was the original and founding journey of Mastery of Multidimensionality nine-month mentorship, to this year's nine-month mentorship, has been really extraordinary, the capacity in which people have been able to anchor their galactic selves now, which is literally anchoring our avatar selves through our bodies onto the earth plane in a very powerful way. And in so doing, it opened the potential for those of us ready to anchor in our homo universalis, our unified self in our unified field, not as a concept, but through the physical body. And the bees hold the template for this. So the bees are not only living with bees is not only a, a delight to be in the the unified field of love and a wonderful health promotion for our system. It actually allows us to live within the unified field of our homo universalis self while we are sharing space with them, while we are cohabitating with them. Oh, any questions to the field or contributions on that little bit? so far john yeah <clears throat> just bringing my consciousness to bees uh, leanne and um you know we're very lucky to live here beside a, a conservation estate at the moment and um we have a really large orchard and i kind of what have been watching with the spring the flowering of of the fruit trees i'm watching um the plums with a lot of different types of plum trees peach trees apples and i have actually noticed and it might be to do with the fact that we are alongside a conservation estate but but we have had a lot of bees and i can see that um in the germination of the fruit as well too so i, I my daily walk through the orchard i'm looking at the little fruit developing on on the um, fruit trees as well too but no I've got a very strong um, feeling that that where we are the the, the bees are um, pretty strong and doing their work as well too um, and of course 
in um, you talking about it again, it reminded me of that delightful Frenchman that we met up north called Frank, who had built a bee house. <laughs> and this was a place that you went into and it had the, the bees in almost like cupboards underneath and you lay on, on the beds and not only did you um, become part of the sound of the bees when you were lying on these beds, um, you could see them and watch them, but you, there was also a tube with a mask that you could bring out and put over your face to breathe um, the scent of the bees as well too, uh, particularly the propolis. And it was he, he was in the process of setting them up all around the world. Um, he had done quite a few in France, particularly Paris, because he is French. And he was having a lot of tremendous healing uh, with people who had lung conditions, um, you know, breathing the propolis up as well too. And um, I had that hovering in the background. It would be lovely to to have one of those little bee houses constructed here too. So you just prodded my memory with it too. So, you know, thank you. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, we're actually, we've got the Bee Life Global invested in the structure to create domes, hexagonal domes for exactly this. Lovely. And yeah, I I was living with three well, I had one hive in my kitchen and two right behind where I sat in my meetings, um, where I was in Bali. But when I was last in Zambia, I actually <laughs> set up my mattress and mosquito net on top of the hive, which was under the the wooden floorboards, and slept with them for a few nights. And that was extraordinary. It's like waking up in ecstasy. So, yeah, well worth an investment, um, providing a space for our bees. Thank you. Diane, yeah. Are you going to create one in Pazzy Loose? <laughs> uh, well, I hadn't thought of that. But when I, I visited a friend um, in 2020 uh, in Costa Rica, and they had these little teeny weeny bees not and that don't sting. And they and they they live in um, like driftwood or or dead wood. Um, and she had this. It was kind of it was a um, a wooden bed with slats, and uh, but it closed, so it was a little you know coffin like, um, and the. And the bees were underneath, and you you just laid in there, and I I I did it every morning for about a half an hour uh, the the whole time that I was there, and it was it was very cool uh, yeah. experience, but I don't know whether the you know it, is the the one that the French guy uses are they are they um, bumblebees or what kind of bees are they? The little teeny ones. No, no, we, they... sorry, uh, no, they, they the ones that he has there are honeybees. He actually produces honey and he and he produces queen bees for people and and he um, passes them on to people or huh. around New Zealand. But there is a native bee in New Zealand um, and we came across them on mass and they were. The ones that I saw were living in um, in the sand, near the sand dunes, near the beach. And there were tiny little holes everywhere and there were thousands of them, but there are tiny little stingless um, native bee that we have here as well. But the ones that Frank had were, were uh, typical honeybees, yeah. Huh. The every, every country in the world has its own native stingless bees. There's up to, it's 200 something, almost 300 different species of stingless bees on our planet and they have extremely powerful propolis unfortunately um because they burrow into dead wood and logs that when people harvest it it's not in any favor of the bees and they'll often destroy the the whole bee, the bees in the hives and the whole structure to to take their propolis out. And this is also something that needs to be revised when it comes to 
um, the way humanity engages with bees is right now, quite honestly, they're treated as a slave species. And farming queens is part of that slave species act. And the way bees are hauled from one place to another just to pollinate at monocrops is the most disruptive thing that can be done to bee families. So it's when we're when we're the mission of Bee Life Global and Earthwalk Global, for that matter, is to restore relationship between humanity and our planet. We have to start looking at this in all of our actions. And monocrop farming is not conducive to restoring harmony on our planet. And for all of the the species that are translocated, relocated, and exterminated in the process. So it's quite a it's quite a shift that humanity is being asked to go through in a short space of time. But quite honestly, we simply can't go on the way we are in destroying our nest, our our host planet. So the bees are giving us a wake up call. And simply by living with them, we begin to think like them. We begin to, it, it reinforms us to act in the ways bees do, that everything they do, they do for the greater good of their hive, of humanity, of all species and our planet. And they do it with love and joy. It's not out of duty. They do it with love and joy. And they have a very short life cycle. Obviously, the queen can live for many years. The more wild her genes are, the more rugged she is. And most others, most workers, only live between 25 and 30 days which is a very short span of life. Our European honeybees might, one, one honeybee may collect enough honey to make one teaspoon of, collect enough nectar to make one teaspoon of honey when processed in their entire life. Bees don't shit in their nest. <laughs> In fact, they're very methodical. They take, they do, I call it their housework flight. And it was really interesting watching my three hives. Um, a, big, a big storm was coming. You could feel it brewing. And one hive at a time, they went out, did their business, left drops of bee gold, stardust, be shit all over the place and then came home and then the next hive went out did theirs and the next one so when the storm came they're all tucked in in their clean house but they don't shit in their nest they don't defile the space of which they live in and they offer their shit to the earth as compost and when a bee dies they tend not to die at home they tend not to burden the hive with their corpse. They will die often away from the hive, decompose, return to nature. And it's an interesting time to discuss death because there's a lot of um, death and dying happening right now. As, as we are being asked to die to what we think we are, to become who we're meant to be, die to projections on futures that are no longer sustainable. And there's a lot of people and animals passing right now as well in this in this window of Samhain Beltane and New Souls Day, Day of the Dead. Um, Ron Laplace, who Waveney and John is very near and dear to them, has recently passed. And so too is our family cat who's been in our family for 12 years and our mother's nearest and dearest companion. We buried her yesterday.
So it's a big time to embrace death and embrace change and to step into the unknown. So stepping into the unknown is the first step. Once you get comfortable with stepping into the unknown, we get asked to live in the not knowing. And living in the not knowing is where magic happens. It's where new universes are burst and our new earth is emerging from. As we pause there, I wonder if there's any more contributions or questions to the field. I see. It's interesting as we're sitting here, the message that keeps coming forward of why the sun portals are coming forth, those birthing gateways are so important right now is because we're all individually and as a planet going through that rebirth cycle, right? So we get to go of all the old and step into the new as the phoenix as those solar beings that are connected to the higher consciousness level and the reason why the bees are so present today is because we can step into that universal level we don't just need to go to homo galactus we can all go all the way to homo universalis and create from that space and that's why they're both coming in today for the circle yes i get a full body Cleopa on that. Thank you. <laughs> That's a yes <laughs> on, on all levels. And it's really beautiful. And, you know, if you think about it, we're here to become one with the sun. Yet mainstream programs people to fear the sun, to stay away from the sun, to get out of the sun. It may harm you. And to cover yourself, if you do get in with the sun, with petrochemicals. <laughs> In most mainstream sunblocks. So, you know, there's got to be something in it if we're being told to stay away from it. So by all means, family, come out unto the sun. Become one with the sun. Harmonize and align with the sun. That's the very gateway which we align through our own soul and solar self. And it is time to embody solar self and move to the next level of galactic and universalis embodiment. That is available to us. And what part of ourselves needs to go <laughs> to make space for that amount of alignment and integrity within our own systems? From that place for we cannot be manipulated. We stand tall, we stand strong, and we stand steady. And... Doing anything is a bonus for just standing in that pillar, standing in that frequency on a regulated nervous system is enough. So out on the earth at sunrise, bare feet on the earth where possible, sun gazing at sunrise feeds us and nourishes our light bodies, which nourishes our physical bodies and all our endocrine system and hormones to bring them into harmony for whatever cycle and stage the sun is going through on our point in the planet right now. Midday sun is also valuable. You may not wish to lie in it naked, as I do occasionally, but do get out in the midday sun. <laughs> And, and breathe it in. Receive from the sun. And sunset is a beautiful time to be walking the earth. Whatever our day has unfolded throughout, to walk on the earth at sunset is a gift. And it's again, it's informing our system and our physical body. It's time to prepare for night. It's time to have your last meal at sunset and let your system close down naturally and organically and prepare for deep and nourishing sleep rather than being glued to the screen. 
with the exception of these gatherings, which I do appreciate for those of you who are joining us at night time in your time zone. So embrace the sun, become one with the sun, and therefore become one and embody our solar selves. It is time. Casey. There's a connection happening in the soul star chakra. It's designed to interact with the solar codes of the sun. And as we embrace that and see it as like a chalice for those codes to come into, it acts like a filter for our, our, our physical system to receive it. This, this is so apt because when I was sorting out my fallout shelter, from arriving back in New Zealand, I had two broken pieces that needed to be returned to nature. One was a wooden bowl from Asia and one was a um, an incense burner from Mexico made of clay. And as I walked out into nature, I thought, oh, this is interesting. I'm taking two chalices and returning them to nature, there's something significant. And I was like, can I keep them blue? I got no. They had to be released for our material selves to deconstruct in order to reconstruct into our crystalline nature that is awaiting us. That, that shift from being a carbon-based manifest vehicle into a crystalline based system is what's happening right now so for those in the northern hemisphere or at Sawain Samhain which is a time of closing down and going in it's quite happening quite naturally for your cycle now to still go into the washing machine into processing the summer but whether we like it or not, this is also happening in Beltane in the Southern Hemisphere. This washing machine cycle is happening in our springtime because of the greater cycles that are unfolding. So for many, this cycle in the washing machine, which is like, you know, that massive tsunami wave of awakening, it's kind of stuck now in the in the roll of the shh. That bit is for many may go on from now, from Samhain Beltane through until the December solstice. And as I mentioned to Casey earlier, my system, which cycles naturally now on galactic and universal cycles, for quite some time has taken the time from December solstice through until Chinese New Year, which will fall at the end of January in 2025. That's my uh, death and rebirth portal. That's my decompress, deconstruct and seed and birth new cycle. So it's a really powerful time not to be doing a lot, yet spending a lot of time in my body, in nature, in my birth land, in the elements and in the waters so that the new will be able to birth quite gracefully by the time the Chinese New Year emerges. And I think I looked it up. I don't know if I remember rightly. I think it's a serpent year and an earth serpent year that's birthing in the Chinese calendar. So wherever you are in that cycle, know that you're not alone. Ooh. If it's like it's supposed to be spring and I'm still doing washing, it's okay. You're just airing out the cobwebs and the moths from winter and um, embrace it. Because what is awaiting us on the other side of this is absolutely magnificent. And I could keep talking about it because it just gives me more ecstasy. However, I bet. Like, is there anyone else who would like to speak, to share a contribution or ask a question to the field whilst we are together today?
bees have something else it seems before we go what is it and I asked my god be me be be yourself because everyone else is taken and and it's it's really it's really funny because that was in my awareness this morning with mainstream media and social platforms today everyone's trying to be the same, be programmed the same. And they're saying the same things in different words, but we're not here to be the same. We're here to be unique. And our frequency, our tones of our own unique sound, song, soul signature is unique. So be wild, be yourself and be unique as the bees are and may we all remember to celebrate unity through diversity and i'm really looking forward to um, a retreat i'm participating in next week on great barrier island in aotearoa to do with biomimicry bio nature mimicry mimicking nature and we're looking at or in particular what i feel i'm wish to pick up the keys for is doing business by nature how do we do business by nature not sustainable business going into regenerative business and I know something new is going to be birthed out of this because it's been made aware to us that we're moving from the pyramid structure of hierarchy, top down, bottom low, into a toroidal field. So how do we operate our personal business lives and professional businesses from the Taurus, from the toroidal field with sources center, which is regenerative for us, for everyone involved in the business and for nature. Uh, watch this space and we might have something more to share when we gather again on our full moon. And I'm very excited about that excursion to going to Great Barrier Island also because I have not been there since 1991 when the Gulf War broke out and I couldn't go back to Nepal where I was leading treks at the time. So it's quite an exciting reunion with another point on the planetary switchboard that awaits with people from many different nationalities and walks of life that are gathering for a greater understanding on how we can come together to make this earth a better place. So thank you all for gathering here today and thank you all for your roles in making this world a better place, for being your unique selves, letting your freak flag fly, because you can. <laughs> and in so doing, uh, allowing others to do so too. You know, it's time. So on that note, may we all return fully intact onto the earth plane as I hand you over to Casey for closing our journey and thanking the bees for their wisdom during our journey today. Yes, we'll gather together one last time, thanking all of those supporters that held us so carefully and delicately in this loving field. Thanking the bees for being here with us. Thanking the solar beings, the sun portals for anchoring in our awareness, allowing us to step more fully in our consciousness field and having that understanding that we choose daily how we will interact with the earth and all that is on the earth at this time. There is responsibility being held by us as we choose to be here and support 
not only ourselves, but all those around us, including the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom and all of the elementals. With so much gratitude, we'll anchor back into our physical systems. Standing softly into our pillars and anchoring that energy back into our bodies. Carrying these codes with us throughout the day, throughout the week, until we gather again. And feeling the softness in our hearts brought in by those gentle bees. When you are ready, add some gentle movement to your body. Feeling the floor beneath you and the chair that you are on. And choosing once again to come back in. Thank you, Casey. And as we do and step out of today with the theme of becoming one with the sun, it, I was just reminded that Comet Atlas became one with the sun a few days ago. And what does it mean when our Atlas becomes one with the sun? When we align with the sun. So let's just drop in that in for a journey for us to all ponder until we meet again in two weeks time. Much love, everyone. Thank you for gathering today from all corners of the continent. And we look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks. <laughs>